how in the world can you make a video in which you give this scathing critique of social media and then you defend social media? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you um, why social media is so self-destructive. It's, uh, it's this time suck that deranges you. It needs to derange you. Social media needs to make you go crazy because the primary goal of social media is to get your eyeballs, to get your attention. And so the more extreme, the more salacious, the more purient, the more of a gory spectacle that it can create, the more eyeballs it gets. So it tends to send us down uh, rabbit holes where we develop hypochondria, fake mental illnesses, fake traumas, we become paranoid, we have uh, conspiracy theories, the pandemic, we're all going nuts. I'm going to defend social media though. First of all, let's understand, social media is a shark, it's not a moral creature, it's a shark. And the chum that it must constantly feed on is your attention, it has to grab you, it has to hijack your brain, it has to suck you in. If it's not doing this, it's not doing its job. If social media platforms aren't extreme in this way, they will lose subscribers and followers and some more extreme social media platform will take its place. To understand what I'm saying, imagine that social media is the I-5. You're on the I-5. You've been going for a long time on that monotonous I-5. You've been driving past a lot of cows. The cows kind of look the same to you. Wasn't that the cow I saw an hour ago? No, it's a new cow. It just looks the same. You're hungry. This is The social media landscape is the same thing as the I-5. You're hungry. Are there any healthy choices off the I-5? Tofu bowl, lentil bowl, no. What you have is uh, greasy cheeseburgers, greasy fries, and milkshakes. That's what people want. People are going to gravitate towards the most fattening rich type of restaurant off the five. Social media is the same way. And that's where we are right now in the evolution of social media. We are in the fat man stage. Probably the best metaphor for social media right now is a place, we're going to have to go off the I-5 now, now we're going to have to go to Las Vegas. We're going to have to go to the Las Vegas Strip. There is a place that, is ve that epitomizes where we are in our evolution of social media. It's called... The Heart Attack Grill. It actually celebrates your death. It actually encourages your premature death. It has uh, on the menu burgers called like the Bypass Quadruple Burger. They have a burger that's this big and it's 20,000 calories. And by the way, you're not a customer when you go to the Heart Attack Grill. You're called a patient. And the servers are called nurses and doctors. And they, give, they even provide you with unfiltered cigarettes. They've made a joke of your reckless disregard for your own life. This gets a lot of attention. There's a lot of social media. And uh, this is pretty much where we are right now with, with what we want in social media. Over 90% of us, when we go on social media platforms, we go to the equivalent, the equivalent of the heart attack grill. Uh, having said that, I'm going to argue that um, I'm going to argue that you need to stay on social media. I'm going to give you four fallacies. One is the uh, the reversal of time fallacy. The second one is the progress fallacy. The third is the false ideal fallacy, and the fourth one we'll call it the extreme measures fallacy. The idea from social media critics that you should delete all of your, <clears throat> excuse me, all of your, um, your social media accounts rests on those four fallacies. Let's go to number one. 
the reversal of time fallacy. You know what? Social media is here. You can't go back in time. You can't be chicken little and run and be scared of change. The toothpaste is out of the tube. This is part of the evolution. You were not put on planet Earth to be afraid of change, to run away from change, to hide, to be Robinson Crusoe and be on an island. The change is here. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to embrace it. Let me give you guys an example. I teach writing in college. Yesterday, my students and I were looking at the benefits and liabilities of a new technology, relatively new, chat GPT, artificial intelligence. And um, people are attenuating to this very mediocre writing word processor. It's mediocre in the sense that chat GPT uses the same cliches, the same stock phrases, he uses very telltale uh, expressions over and over and over again. It's a very mediocre uh, processor, but it saves people time. And people in the business world, you know, if if they can write, um, if they can write something with ChatGPT in one minute, as opposed to spending four hours writing a memo to their employees, they're going to use ChatGPT. If you're a cop and you're writing up a report. And that report can be written in uh, 30 seconds versus um, versus uh, two hours. Just the productivity and efficiency is going to make us attenuate ourselves to the mediocrity of ChatGPT. You're not going to stop it. And so, as a writing instructor, you know, should I feel sorry for myself? Should I whine? Should I say my job will be over? No, I was telling my students yesterday. In life, you don't get to choose the challenges that you have to address. Life creates those challenges for you, and you have to address them. Now, I'm probably going to retire in two years, but imagine a, a college writing instructor five years from now. Their job, I think they'll still have a job. I don't think they're going to be replaced by ChatGPT, but I'll tell you this. I'm already doing it now, in 2024. A lot of my job now is teaching students how to write prompts into ChatGPT, because ChatGPT TP is only as good as this very specific type of prompts you put in it. It takes a certain amount of linguistic acquisition to write a, a prompt that's going to get you an effective response. So yes, in the next decade, college writing instructors will be teaching students how to use ChatGPT to, to present professional documents. Are you going to complain about it? No, you can't be chicken little. You can't run. It's here. It's inevitable. There's always going to be new technology. You, you have to embrace it. Okay, let's go to the progress fallacy. The progress fallacy is that technology should be pushing us in this linear line of progress. No. Really good technology, actually, can be very disruptive. It can be uh, chaotic. And you can go through growing pains. There's a learning curve. And that's where we are right now. We are in the heart attack grill phase of social media. Most of us, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're drawn to these extreme things, and it's, it's pretty hellacious. I mean, people have lost their mind. Check this out. This morning, I'm shopping at Trader Joe's. I'm, I'm talking to Chad. Chad's cool. Chad and I are talking. And he knows that I worked in his industry when I was going to college. I worked at a wine store in Berkeley back in the 80s, and I'm talking about it. We're talking about the customers, you know, most of them are good. He said the other night, it was closing time. They ran out of bags. And a woman said, this is a conspiracy. This is the pandemic. You, you purposely ran out of bags. What? You know, this woman with painted eyebrows or something. You know, I mean, she's completely nuts. You can't even have a rebuttal to that. You know what I mean? Guarantee. She's been down some crazy social media rabbit hole, man. This is where we are right now with social media. It's probably going to get better if we survive. If we survive. Hopefully we'll adapt. But right now, we're in a very, um, we're in a bad place in social media. You don't want to be stuck in the heart attack grill stage of social media where all we want to do is see the salacious and the extreme and, and, and just, you know, the worst part of ourselves. I would hope that we will evolve as it will see, I mean, who knows, man? I'm 62. 
talk to me in 30 years where we are with, with a social media. Uh, that brings us to the false ideal fallacy. Yes, it's true that most people use social media in really bad ways. They get addicted. They join these extremist tribes. They fall down conspiracy rabbit holes. They, they go down hypochondria rabbit holes. They start diagnosing themselves, amateur uh, psychological afflictions. Oh, I suffer from PTSD. Really? Do you really? Why? Because you saw a dog you didn't like on the street? Get out of here. Uh, you know what, man? It's always been like that. 90% of people have all, always misused everything. Back before social media, when there were books. Remember when people used to read books? Well, 90% of the people who bought books bought trash books, pulp fiction, trash novels. It's called Sturgeon's Law. 90% of everything is crap, and the way 90% of people use everything is crap. That's called Surgeon's Law. Don't blame social media. Surgeon's Law, that 90% of everything is crap, existed long before social media. So don't have some false ideal about what social media is supposed to be like. Let's get to the fourth fallacy. Fourth fallacy. Extreme measures fallacy. Another way of... of uh, Defining the extreme measures fallacy is an old saying we've all heard. Don't throw away the baby with the bathwater. That's an extreme measure, man. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot of benefits from social media. Oh my God, I have students who, if they don't understand the math lesson or the physics lesson or the calculus lesson or the chemistry lesson, they get lessons on YouTube whether it be from their professor or some other professor, there's a lot of education on YouTube. There are science-based nutritionists on YouTube. There are kettlebell instructors that I follow on YouTube. There are yoga instructors who are giving amazing instruction. There are so, there's so much benefit. You could, you could learn a language on YouTube. You, you could learn how to play an instrument on YouTube. Uh, there's so many benefits. Don't throw away the baby with a bathwater. You know, hobbies. A lot of you guys know me, man. I have a watch hobby. I've met fellow watch enthusiasts. And the majority of my interactions with my fellow watch enthusiasts have been positive. And I've learned a lot about watches from my fellow watch enthusiasts. And I've also learned that my watch enthusiast friends and I, we have a lot in common. You know, we're very detail-oriented. I don't like the way those sword hands uh, go. You know, I can't see the, the GMT hand. It's it, The colors are too much the same. Blah, blah, blah. We go crazy because we're detail-oriented, and we want everything just so. You know, I've learned that we have a lot of things in common. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to throw away all those benefits. It, it's not happening. No, man, you know what? We got to stop whining. We got to stop blaming social media. It's not a social media problem. It's a you problem. People who are mature, people who have a focus, people who have a higher purpose, people who have a structure, a routine, a discipline, they're using social media in really beneficial ways. They're using ChatGPT in beneficial ways. I'm using ChatGPT in beneficial ways. I'm trying to teach my students how to use it. I'm not going to run away from all this technology. I understand that the majority of us are using the social media to park our car on the Las Vegas Strip and eat that quadruple bypass burger so that we can die. But we got to fight that. We got to adapt. We got to get through this This. Uh, this heart attack grill uh, stage that we're in. I think it's just part of the evolution. Ladies and gentlemen, am I being too op optimistic? Am I uh, being too optimistic regarding uh, the, the idea that we could actually evolve and get out of this stage where we're just looking at junk on social media and we're just consuming the most grotesque triple bypass cheeseburgers and, and we're going to die from it? Do, am, am I wrong to think that this is just the initial growing uh, pain stage of our social media evolution? I mean, I'm not saying this definitively. I'm, I'm hoping I'm right. I got kids. I got children. I want them to be in a better world. Ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. And until next time, I'm out.